Ok, hello, bonjour. Welcome to Waterton Glacier Science and History Week 2021. Thank you so much for joining us today as we explore conservation efforts in Waterton Glacier International Peace Park World Heritage Site. The Peace Park, the first of its kind established in 1932, includes Waterton Lakes National Park in Alberta, Canada, and Glacier National Park in Montana, United States. My name is Christy Gustavison and I am the External Relations Manager for Waterton Lakes National Park. And I am joined by my colleagues here in Waterton Lakes today, as well as in Glacier National Park, Montana. My colleagues and I want to respectfully acknowledge we are on the traditional territory and ancestral homelands of the Siksikik Sitapi, Kootenai, Salish, Quilispe people with whom we, whom we recognize as original stewards of this land and their relatives within it. We honor with gratitude the people who have cared for this land throughout the generations and continue to maintain enduring connections to these territories. This is the last day of a four-day webinar series highlighting current research and conservation topics related to Waterton Glacier International Peace Park. It has been a pleasure to share these findings directly to you, wherever you may be. We'll be sending out a survey after this at webinar and would love to hear your feedback as it helps us plan future events like this. Today, we are featuring the presentation Supporting Indigenous-Led Conservation and Restoration and Indigenous Engagement from Fato Maxikimi, Waterton Lakes National Park. Kim Pearson is presenting today. She is the Nature Legacy Scientist for Waterton Lakes National Park, leading Parks Canada's efforts to support Indigenous-led conservation and landscape scale conservation in the Waterton region. Carly is from the Pikani Nation, part of the Blackfoot Confederacy. Her Blackfoot name is Apoyaki, which means fair woman. She recently graduated from the University of Lethbridge and has worked for two summers with Parks Canada. She is our knowledge weaver. Her position is the first of its kind within Parks Canada, bringing together Western science with traditional knowledge through conservation and restoration initiatives within the park and surrounding Indigenous communities. Joseph Many Fingers is from the Kainai First Nation, also part of the Blackfoot Confederacy. His Blackfoot name is Maestikwaman, which means crow feather. He has been the Indigenous Liaison Officer with Waterton Lakes National Park since July 2019. His role is to restore maintain and build relationships with Indigenous partners in the area now administered as Waterton Lakes National Park. Thank you again for joining us today. The presentation will last about 30 minutes and we will have about 10 minutes allotted for questions at the end of the presentation. You can write your question at any time during the presentation in the questions box. And if you would like live captioning, the link has been pasted in the chat box. So I will now pass over the screen to my colleagues, Kim, Carly, and Joseph. We're good to go. Yes, go ahead. Okay, uh, good day. Uh, my name is Joseph Many Fingers, make Slick him on. And it's a pleasure to be here today and connect with all of you. Um, I will be talking today on the external relations Indigenous led projects within the park. We are happy to have this opportunity to share how we've been supporting Indigenous-led conservation and restoration and Indigenous engagement from Pukta Mok Waterton Lakes National Park. Pukta Mok 
Sukumi is the Blackfoot name for this area. Its meaning is sacred lake within the mountains. At Parks Canada, we have key roles and responsibilities toward reconciliation with Indigenous people. We share vast areas of common ground in the land and all the elements it supports. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada has provided the following definition of reconciliation. The process of establishing and maintaining a mutually respectful relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people in this country. There has to be awareness of the past, an acknowledgement of the harm that has been inflicted, atonement for the causes and action to change behavior. So today what we're going to talk about is the external relations based Indigenous engagement, supporting Indigenous-led conservation and restoration. The work of Waterton's Knowledge Weaver and audience calls to action. So I fill the, the role of the Indigenous Liaison Officer here in Waterton. I've been on staff since July 2019. And yes, I am a member of the Kainai Nation. The, one of, the Kainai Nation is part of the Blackfoot Confederacy, which are Indigenous partners here in Waterton. As part of Canada's response to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action, my job was created to work with all Indigenous partners to assert traditional territory to Bokdomoxikini. I'm kept very busy with building new relationships with nations, asserting traditional territory claims, and repairing some existing relations with Indigenous partners in Bokdomoxikini and the Bari U Ranch National Historic Site. I play a role in helping Waterton Lakes National Park navigate and advance many of the relationships and programs described in this presentation. Orientated. Here is a cloud view, eye view of the Waterton region. Waterton Lakes National Park is shown in bright yellow. It is located in the extreme southwestern corner of Alberta. There are two Blackfoot nations based on three reserves in close proximity to the national park, the Kainai and the Begani nations. To the northeast, the Blood Reserve is the largest reserve by area in Canada. It is located 12 kilometers from the boundary of Waterton Lakes National Park. This is the Kainai Nation or the Blood Tribe. Please note that these two names will be used interchangeably throughout this presentation. The Blood Timber Reserve is much smaller. You'll have to look more closely to see it bordered on three sides by Waterton Lakes National Park. It is separate from the main blood reserve, but is held by the same blood tribe, Kainai Nation. The Gunny Nation is slightly further away, 30 kilometers to the north. Given this close proximity, we have especially close, long-standing relationships with Kainai Nation and the Gunny Nation. Though we've long been neighbors or near neighbors with these local nations, Meaningful and positive interactions between Waterton Lakes National Park staff and Indigenous community members have been relatively limited through most of the National Park's 125 year history. Gratefully, as we're focusing on today, more meaningful and positive relationships have evolved. We are currently working on well over 20 separate external relations based projects within the park with our Indigenous partners. As I mentioned earlier, we have good working relationships with our two closest Indigenous partners, Kainai and Bigani. As well, we work with the Six Gates at the Blackfoot Confederacy Tribal Council. Recently, the Six Nation and the Stony and Nakoda Nations have expressed interest in Bokdomoxikini. 
So I'd like to touch on four projects you're currently working on. The Trailhead Project, Octomoxicumi Cultural Center, the Visitor Center, and the Indigenous Advisory Committee. On the Trailhead Project, you can see this map here. It's uh, got a lot of the uh, Blackfoot names for a lot of the trails. A lot of these trails are ancient uh, migration routes. Um, they were they were used for a purpose. And I think in today's in today's times, a lot of these trails are actually used for hiking, for recreational. So a lot of these ancient trails have been been used for for thousands of years by indigenous people. But the Moxicomi has always been a popular destination for the Blackfoot and other nations. Indigenous people would attend the area to hunt ini, which is the Blackfoot word for bison, and gather medicines that are sometimes not found anywhere else. Trade was a common practice between nations, and since that area was popular, this was an ideal place to engage in those activities. After 2017 Kenau wildfire, all the trailhead signs were damaged. Several trails, trails that have been identified by the Kanai and Bigani elders are ancient trails, and those trails have been given their Blackfoot names. New signage will be going up identifying the trails in Blackfoot, English, and French. The park is also planning to work with our Indigenous partners to install Oki welcoming signs at the entrances to the park. Bokhtumaksikimi Cultural Center. Kainai has leased a parks building located along the lakeshore. The building is called the Bokhtumaksikimi Cultural Center. Kainai's goal is to tell the Blackfoot story their way. The center has Kainai knowledge keepers or elders that tell the story of the Blackfoot people in the area. They currently run interpretive programming, demonstration dancing, and drumming. Eventually, they would like to work to have guided hikes by knowledge keepers and serve traditional Blackfoot cuisine. Parks Canada provides interpretive programming and quality visitor experience training to the employees of the Bakhtamaksukmi Cultural Center. Waterton Lakesfield unit has been seeing an increase in visitors attending the park. The new visitor center is being constructed to meet the needs of our visitors. The field unit reached out to Kanai and Bigani elders to provide their knowledge of the Blackfoot culture and stories of Bakhtamaksukumi. Their stories and knowledge of this sacred place have been documented and will be placed on interpretive panels throughout the new building. Discussions are being held with both nations to have them participate in the opening ceremonies. No date has been set yet. The Indigenous Advisory Committee is new and will be established with the hope of having discussions on Indigenous-led projects within the park. We want the Indigenous partners to share and tell their own story of Bakhtamaksukumi. All, all three Canadian nations within the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Kainai, Bigani, Siksiga, will have repre representation, as well as the Stony Nakoda. I see this committee growing with Waterton Lakes field units uh, other Indigenous partners eventually being a part of and contributing to the committee. As per Canada's commitment to reconciliation and calls to action, I believe the Waterton Lakes Field Unit is moving in the right direction. We have come a long way in improving relationships with our Indigenous partners, and we still have much to do. I am excited for what lies ahead. Now I'd like to hand over the presentation to Kim to speak on conservation-based Indigenous projects. Thank you, Joseph. 
Joseph's presence on our team makes a very positive difference to my work as Waterton Lakes National Park's nature legacy scientist. In place since 2018, the Government of Canada's Nature Legacy Program is the largest investment in nature conservation in Canada's history. The three pillars of this work being undertaken in Parks Canada's field units are from the left side of the screen here uh, to the right, healthy ecosystems, which includes ecological integrity or EI, species at risk and climate change. Um, also landscape scale conservation and supporting indigenous led conservation. Knowledge development, use and sharing is led by Parks Canada's national office. In my 25 year career in conservation, I have not been involved in a more promising, hopeful program. It is achieving real effective cons collaborative conservation and restoration work across the country at a time when it is only becoming more critical. Perhaps most significantly, this program has provided a strong catalyst for Waterton Lakes National Park to support indigenous led conservation. This will be evident as I review some examples of Indigenous-led conservation work we're supporting from Atamaxikami. Collaboration on Indigenous conservation and restoration efforts contributes to achievement of all the other nature, pro nature legacy program goals. My journey in the vital work of supporting Indigenous-led conservation began with frogs, Matsi, Kapisa, and Blackfoot. Northern leopard frogs had been extirpated from the Waterton region since about 1980. Successful Park Canada led restoration efforts have been underway in the Waterton River drainage of the national park since 2015. The Northern leopard frog is reclaiming its former territory within the Waterton drainage at Fatamaxikami, which is great news for a change. A next step is to restore the species in the Belly River drainage, which they also inhabited historically. Lands within the Billy River drainage are managed by multiple jurisdictions, including the Blood Timber Reserve. I approached the Blood Tribe Land Management Department in 2018 regarding potential for translocation to a suitable site on the Blood Timber Reserve. We're looking forward to working together to restore northern leopard frogs in the area in the coming years. In the meantime, we're working jointly and monitoring northern leopard frogs. This is Blood Tribe Lands Department's Environmental Protection Manager, Kanzi Fox, surveying for leopard frogs with me last summer. Kanzi is a strong leader in many of the Kainai led initiatives that we're supporting. The outcome of restoring northern leopard frogs at Vatamaxikimi is more meaningful and successful as we collaborate with Indigenous communities and their ways of knowing. A primary challenge and opportunity identified by the Kainai community is a need to remove garbage accumulated on blood tribe lands. Kenzie's team organized community cleanups on the Blood Timber Reserve last October and this month. Waterton Lake National Park provided staff assistance and logistic support, such as providing access to the group camp facility to support feeding lunch to the hungry cleanup teams. And many nation, Kainai Nation members camp in the Timber Reserve with no associated facilities. To reduce potential for human wildlife conflicts arising from the lack of garbage facilities, Parks Canada established a fair proof garbage bin within the timber reserve this summer. We'll service it regularly going forward. One more garbage bin to empty on our route could result in a significant help with waste management in this area. We're also supporting Indigenous fire stewardship through Waterton Lakes National Parks Fire Program. This image was captured this past spring at the Maskinonj day use area. Our fire team was preparing there for a prescribed fire by burning a fire guard. The site is host to a Blackfoot Confederacy marker made of stones that you can see toward the bottom of the image. The Blackfoot Confederacy is comprised of the four Blackfoot nations based in Alberta and Montana. We're working to build capacity of Indigenous communities to continue their ancient practice of fire stewardship through training and experience. Indigenous community members have been participating in Parks Canada's training courses, such as an int introduction to prescribed fire planning and fire crew member training. We've heard some participants speak of plans to combine what they learned through these Western-based science courses with their Indigenous knowledge to return fire to the land. Parks Canada plans to hire Indigenous community members who've completed the training to assist with prescribed fires, and we're working towards supporting a small prescribed fire within the Blood Timber Reserve. Another example of Indigenous-led work 
work we're supporting is the Blackfoot Confederacy's Native Trope Project, which involves building Blackfoot shared leadership and capacity in Native Trope recovery, addressing climate change, non-native species, and habitat loss on Alberta eastern slopes. Waterton Lakes National Park is providing funding, logistic, training, and communication support. And one of the highlights of this work has been Blackfoot Confederacy team members were joining Waterton Lakes National Park staff to conduct full trout surveys. This is a native trout project technician from Siksika Nation collecting an eDNA sample in the headwaters of the Old Man River. For those not familiar with it, environmental DNA or eDNA is a recent Western science based technology that the team is uniting with Indigenous knowledge. They're surveying for bull trout and West Loop cutthroat trout by collecting water samples and testing for the presence of each species' DNA. This is another example of the innovative work of Indigenous communities combining Western and indig Indigenous ways of knowing to address modern conservation issues. And we're grateful to have the opportunity to support this work. Perhaps the most significant support we provided to Indigenous-led conservation and restoration efforts to date has been toward the Kainai Mimi rematriation. This is the Kainai Nation's effort to restore Plains Bison, as Joseph mentioned, known as Ini in Blackfoot, to a large area of native mixed grass prairie most recently used for cattle ranching on the Blood Reserve. Parks Canada is providing significant financial support to the nation in successfully establishing 40 disease-free Plains Bison calves provided by Elk Island National Park this past February. Our support has also involved provision of scientific equipment in support of their pre and post bison science program, veterinary support, and donation of bison fencing left over from Bath National Park's bison restoration. Collectively, these several large and small contributions add up to a significant level of support toward the return of Eni to Kainai Nation, which is bringing renewal of cultural, spiritual, and ecological connections. Kansi Fox, who I introduced you to earlier with the frog survey noted, it will not be long before the ancestral relationships that once existed between Ini and Kainai and between the flora and fauna of the Kainai Ini rangelands are revitalized. Elliot Fox, former Kainai Ini rematriation coordinator noted early on in Parks Canada's involvement that our support as a strong collaborator was real action from Parks Canada and add significant leverage to our proposal to get Blood Tribe Council support and keep moving ahead with Ini. And Kainai Elder Leroy Little Bear, a Kainai Ini rematriation leader, said soon after arrival of the bison, we're very, very thankful to the National Park Service for working with us, partnering with us in this buffalo restoration. Kainai Ini rematriation is an effort Waterton Lakes National Park is very grateful to be playing a part in. As the sun sank over the mountains soon after the bison herd's arrival, that cold February evening, the people in the land seemed to breathe a collective sigh of relief. The hoof prints of Ini visible in the foreground of this image were the first to return to that landscape in 140 years. The government of Canada, which played a role in the historic removal of these animals, is now playing a key role in returning them. And the good bison News doesn't end there. A week after the Kainai Ini arrived, Plains Bison were returned to Waterton's Bison Paddock for the first time since the 2017 Kina wildfire. They had been removed from the paddock prior to that fire. Six Elk Island National Park bison were transported by Dan Fox, a bison specialist from Kainai Nation shown here with Parks Canada's support in February 2021. A small group of elders were present as observers and they held an Ini blessing ceremony. Parks Canada directed media interest to feature Kainai elder Leroy Little Bear, who spoke to the deep significance of returning Ini to both Bata Maksikimi and Kainai Nation within a week. This is another good news story and one that we intend to continue with Indigenous involvement going forward. And to conclude my portion of the presentation, I'll share a thought from Alvin First Rider, who's an environmental researcher with Blood Tribe Land Management, Environmental Protection Division. This is Alvin and I in this image, eDNA sampling for amphibians at the Blood Timber Reserve. Alvin's recently noted that the Blood Tribe Land Management Environmental Protection Division and Parks Canada have built a relationship built on based on a reciprocal knowledge exchange 
Together we have built a relationship that weaves Blackfoot ecological knowledge and Western ideology that has strengthened our data collection and monitoring. This is powerful, meaningful work that I am grateful to be involved in. These collaborative, reciprocal relationships are healing the land and healing and empowering Indigenous community members. It's a pleasure now to pass the presentation over to my colleague from Fugani Nation, Carly Greer Stewart, whose exciting new and innovative position builds further on this important work. Okay, Nistu Anagok Apoyaki, Nimtok Du Bigani. Hi everyone, my name is Carly Greer Stewart, and I work in Waterton Lakes National Park as a knowledge weaver. Parks Canada is making a concerted effort to build and strengthen relationships with Indigenous communities within whose traditional territories it operates. The Nature Legacy Program with, um, emphasizes the importance of building strategic collaborations with Indigenous peoples and other partners. The primary purpose of my work is to build respectful, meaningful, and reciprocal connections between Indigenous and non-Indigenous ways of knowing, understanding, and interacting with the landscape in the Bahtamaxikimi region. This includes providing direct support for legal Indigenous-led conservation efforts. On June 8th, the gates to the summer bison paddock were opened. Myself, Joseph, and Kim each opened the gate along the summer paddock fence. The bison eventually crossed through the gates into the summer paddock, which we witnessed through a wildlife camera set um, up on the fence. When the Eni came back to Waterton in February, it felt like I was truly connected to both the Eni and the land. I thought about my ancestors and their connection to the Eni. So being able to witness them being brought back to Bakhtamak and then crossing into the summer paddock was very meaningful to me as we were able to help them come back home. The Bison Paddock Loop Road officially opened on National Indigenous Peoples Day on June 21st. In July 2021, we set up a wildlife camera, or well, multiple wildlife cameras, in various locations throughout the Bison Paddock. This allowed us to monitor the EME in the paddock. I just wanted to share a couple of photos that we've um, caught so far in the cameras. I think it's really interesting to see, to see these photos. Another new addition to the park this year is the Aquatic Invasive Species Inspection Station. Aquatic Invasive Species are a threat to the environment and to recreational activities in and around water. The Aquatic Invasive Species Program set up an inspection station that makes it mandatory for all non-motorized watercraft to go through the inspection station before launching their watercraft. The inspection station helps to protect the water and the environment from threats like whirling disease, Quagga mussels, zebra mussels, and many other invasive species. Through the Aquatic Invasive Species Program, six Indigenous people have been welcomed to the team to run the inspection station. I was lucky enough to be able to work with this team every couple of weeks. By working directly with visitors, the staff were able to share values around their connection to water. They were also able to use their knowledge and passion to help the visitors recognize and respect Indigenous values. By working with Begani Nation Lands Department and Environment and Climate Change Canada, we were able to secure funding for a species at risk project between Waterton Lakes National Park and Begani Nation. The project's purpose is to increase capacity for conservation efforts for terrestrial species at risk and facilitate continuation of cultural knowledge gathered from the land through youth and elder connections and conservation work. Part of the funding that is dedicated to supporting youth and elder connections through conservation allowed for a few field days this season. July 13th was the first field tour held in Waterton Lakes National Park. August 9th was the second field day with a larger group of students and other youth. Kim and I met with Begani Youth, Begani Nation Lands Department, and Elder Jordan No Chief at his residence in Begani Nation. The youth were introduced to eDNA sampling while also being told stories of the land and knowledge of plants by the elder. August 10th was the first beginning youth field day held in Waterton. The youth were able to join resource conservation teams for the day to learn about the important work being done, with the animals, water, and the land within the park. By participating in these field days, the youth are able to gain experience in conservation work and learn about potential employment opportunities. August 24th was the final field day that we had this season. In total, we had about 45 youth attend this summer. 
When I was younger, I had the opportunity to be a part of a society in Bigani Nation called the Nibomogeeks. The society taught us our culture and our connection to the land as six agates at the beaks, or Blackfoot people. I truly believe that the Nibomogeeks shaped my life today and led me to this opportunity of hosting Bigani Field Days for my fellow Bigani youth. I think that by continuing to have programs like these, more youth will take interest in learning about the land that surrounds them through traditional knowledge, as well as take interest in conservation work. The following are quotes from two of the Begani youth that attended the field days. The first quote is from Haley, and she said, I really like coming to Waterton today because I got to learn a lot of new stuff. Some of those problems I've seen before, but I didn't know that they were a problem. I'm encouraged to come back and maybe even try and work here myself. The second quote is from Amelia, and she said, I really, I, I really actually enjoyed today. I learned a lot while coming here, especially the firefighting. I was thinking of getting into firefighting. For everyone that is watching this webinar today, we encourage you to take action in your own way. To learn more, here are some recommended resources for building knowledge and understanding and to be better prepared as an ally. 21 things you may not know about the Indian Act and the geography of blood are good resources to help understand the history involved and to be better prepared to be an ally. Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer is a must read for anyone interested in learning about weaving ways of knowing and developing reciprocal relationships. Fire Smart Canada has a great resource called Blazing the Trail, celebrating Indigenous fire stewardship. Beyond that, there's an abundance of other web webinars and online resources. We also encourage you to reach out and get to know and support Indigenous natives and deepen your connection with the land. You can help make a difference. In closing, as noted, Waterton Lakes National Park is still in the relatively early stages of our learning and journey in supporting Indigenous-led conservation and restoration and Indigenous engagement efforts. These are small yet significant steps toward reconciliation. We have accomplished a lot and have a lot to celebrate together with our Indigenous neighbours. We are looking forward to the road ahead. Please keep safe and we welcome any questions or connections now and into the future. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kim, Carly, and Joe, for your presentation. Um, I, I do see there is one question from the audience, so perhaps I will pose that um, for you. And uh, it's from Dan, and he says, great work. I sincerely hope there are cooperative efforts going on with Glacier National Park and the local Blackfeet Nation. Uh, please discuss those efforts. And so I think I'll preface this, uh, Dan, by saying that um, I'm aware that there are efforts in Glacier National Park. You've got the Waterton team here today. Um, so I don't know if we, if the team here wants to take a, make an effort to address it and whether uh, somebody from Glacier also wants to chime in. So let's well, let Waterton go first. Uh, Joseph here. I'm not aware of uh, what Glacier is doing. Uh, Kim, are you aware of anything going on down there? It's been hard to get down to Montana yeah. recently. <laughs> yeah. um, so we, we, uh, we haven't maybe being as, as well connected with what, what they're working on um, as we could be. But yeah, um, I know that they are working with the Blackfeet Nation quite closely on a number of efforts, but we we likely shouldn't speak for them on, on the yeah. details of that. But yeah. yeah, as Christy mentioned, if anybody is interested, um, available from the place here that's um, part of the moderation of the call, then please feel free to chime in if you're aware of anything. This is Tara Carolyn, and yes, we have a history of meeting with the uh, tribe. Usually every spring we get together and discuss the projects that both the park and the tribe have going on and look for opportunities for collaboration. That said, the models that you at Waterton are developing now is new and, and we have not done that to the extent you have and we are really interested in 
learning from your experience and um, maybe adopting some of these principles in the future. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for that question. It's it's a it's a really good one, and and I guess a um, an indication that we should we should chat with our Glacier colleagues and get to know better what um, what they're working on and, and share our experiences, as Tara mentioned. Okay, thank you. And another question, uh, similar uh, similar in nature. Uh, do you coordinate? any of your conservation and education programs with indigenous and non-indigenous partners in the United States, mainly Northwest Montana? Hmm. So again, I guess due to um, the COVID situation, we haven't been able to, to cross the border and, and work physically on the landscape in Montana at all, but uh, again, a really good question and maybe something we can explore with our, our Glacier National Park colleagues and, and other partners in the future. Thank you. Uh, Tara, do you want to take also answer? So Glacier, of course, has the Native America Speak program, which is one of the longest running programs of its nature. Uh, I think we could do, there are a lot of projects that we work on together with Waterton, and we could emphasize the Waterton Glacier and Indigenous Partnership um, further. So I think there's some good opportunities for that. Yeah, thank you. And I'll just add that we do also collaborate um, through the Crown of the Continent Consortium on a variety of initiatives. So um, yes, we do. We do what we can. Uh, as Kim noted, it's been quite challenging the last 18 months um, to work together. But uh, we're bringing you this event today as a collaborative effort. Uh, Cross border directly to where you are rather than in one of our parks. Um, so, a uh, question here that I think I can answer. Uh, would love to follow your work more than once a year. Do any of you have social media accounts that you highlight your work on? Uh, speaking on behalf of my colleagues, Waterton Lakes National Park has a Facebook page and a Twitter page. And I know that Glacier National Park also does. So, th that's a great spot. Uh, to start and on our social media pages for Waterton specifically we highlight things like this uh, throughout the year uh, on our accounts and often link to photos or web content or video short videos of different things so that's a great way to follow up follow us um, Uh, so, and then the next question uh, is from Su Susan. Can you please tell us about the archaeological sites uncovered by the Kenai wildfire, please? After the uh, Kenai wildfire, archaeology crew came in and discovered a, a, a boat just under a hundred new sites and re-examined some of the other sites that were known and found out that some of those sites had actually expanded. So the archaeology team uh, just finished up for the season here in the park and uh, they've been going strong for since the wildfire when they could. A little bit restricted because of COVID last year and a little bit this year but uh, we, we also just hired uh, a fellow from the archaeology team who is going to be like an education officer, archaeology education officer. What he'll do is he'll present a lot of the findings to uh, visitors and to partners to the park. And with the help of our indigenous partners, we want to try to weave the, the indigenous history here with the archaeology fund. So that's what we're currently working on now. 
Thanks, Joe. Uh, definitely looking forward to sharing more opportunities on this. We know many people are interested and uh, we'll be providing updates again on our social channels uh, and our website as that evolves. Uh, question here, uh, does Waterton Lakes also offer um, Native America Speaks programs? Again, I can answer this one actually. Maybe the project team wants to add in. Um, we do offer a speaker series in person uh, during the summer. Of course, uh, the pandemic has changed some of our offer and we really are looking forward to bringing back in-person programming, including presentations uh, from our Indigenous, uh, in, in collaboration with our Indigenous partners, both uh, Parks Canada and at the Pato Maxicami Cultural Centre. So again, uh, another plug for what the website and the social media. Um, okay, and then one final comment. Uh, thanks for a great talk. For researchers working in Waterton, can we hire Indigenous youth to work with us on summer research? Who can we get in touch with to find interested Kainai or Pikani youth who might want to do this? Uh, I think uh, the experts in the room can answer that one. That's really great to hear. Thank you so much for suggesting that and, and your um, your thought toward that. Really appreciate that and, and encourage it for sure. And um, if you connect with us, I think we can maybe help you out. Um, uh, I'm not sure if maybe Chris, if you want to put uh, Joseph's or, or my or Carly's um, email address in the, the chat and they can Whoever this is asking this great question could can get in touch with us and we can support you that way. That'd be great. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yes, I've noted who the question is. We can get we can put you in touch. Yes, sure. Sounds great. All right. Uh, and one other comment from Glacier National Park that I've been alerted to is in addition, in addition to the Crown Managers Partnership, we also communicate, especially with our uh, the Native American tribes through the Crown Roundtable as well, uh, so that I can underline that on behalf of all my colleagues. So uh, I'm not seeing any new questions. So thank you so much for joining us again today. And thank you to our speakers, uh, her team, the planning team and the technical team uh, that helped out behind the scenes. Um, and again, just a reminder, we'll be sending out a survey after this webinar and we'd love to hear your feedback as it does help us plan uh, future events and presentations like this. Uh, sincerely hope you enjoy the rest of your of the day and we will be closing this uh, um, session shortly. So thank you very much and have a great day wherever you may be. Thank you and take care.